Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and as many of you have asked, I thought I'd do a what's on my iPhone for mid-2016. I tend to do about three of these a year, at the beginning of the year, middle, and end of the year. Now, for those of you that care more about Android, I'll be doing one of those as well, and this is my iPhone 6S Plus. Now, I've been using this and my iPhone 6S back and forth. Uh, this is actually running iOS 10 Beta 2 right now, which is basically public beta one, or they're very similar anyway. And I had switched back and forth between the 6S because that's running iOS 9, or the more recent version of 9, and it was more stable. Now iOS 10 beta 2 seems to be pretty stable. But anyway, for any of you that have been following me for some time, you'll see that my home screen looks pretty familiar. I have a staple of apps, mostly these right here, that really never change, and occasionally I change out the bottom two rows or so of them. And right now, I actually have Snapseed installed for basically doing videos and things uh, and pictures for those videos on social media, things like that. Uh, Flipboard for news. I've been really disappointed with news lately, and I have to say not because of the news coming out, but more so along the lines of the app. Flipboard, Flipboard is a great app, but I used to really like Pulse News and the way it presented the news in block sections. So you might have your favorite site here, in each row would be a different site, and each one would be a next news story. I really haven't seen any of those, and I would love to see another one. I actually have, uh, on an older iPhone, I have Pulse News installed still, and it still works, and I would love to be able to use an app that is updated regularly that takes advantage of that. Apple's new news app really just doesn't cut it for me. I mean, it's okay. It does a good job, I suppose, but it, I don't want it more in a magazine style. I want it more along the lines of what I said, row by row by row. But anyway, right now these are what I'm using. I'm using Tweetbot for Twitter, and this was a pretty expensive app. It was $10, and I know there's some really good little features in there, but I actually prefer the stock Twitter app. I set it back on the last third page here, and I prefer that. And I have to say that it just seems to work better, and I guess the one part where it works better is if I wanna update my feed, I hit here, I have to double tap, and then it updates again and double taps, and I'm really kind of frustrated the way that works. So uh, I wish it would be a little bit faster. With this Twitter app, you just tap it once. So maybe it's just a setting, something like that. And there's a lot of extra features in Tweetbot that aren't in the regular Twitter app, but uh, that aside, I think it's okay. I've, I'm, I'm still going to continue to use it. Now this app, if you haven't seen this, this is actually a pretty nice app. Great Big Story is a bunch of different stories, uh, one or two a day, and they're only a couple minutes long, and they're video stories from different people. So this one I actually really like. Um, my dad actually suggested it to me, and there's all sorts of different things, different little stories, uh, everything from cultural to uh, sports or if you like planet Earth, uh, Earth-related things. Uh, human condition related things. It's really pretty nice and it works really well uh, and it's just a quick little video to kind of give you a different perspective on things and I, I really appreciate that. If we'll slide over here and my home screens have gotten pretty loaded up. So right now I have different apps. I've shown you quite a few that I've used before under finance and everything else. And what I do is I tend to put things in folders that I use long term and keep things out that I want to shift around and see about using. So if you saw my recent Drobo 5N review, I use this Drobo Access app. And so at this point, since I'm going to continue using it, what I'll normally do is just move this over into utilities and when I need it, it's there. Uh, Nest is another one that's actually going to be going away because, well, I have a video I need to do on that, and my Nest thermostats, while good, I had to remove them and go back to the old thermostats. It's kind of a long story. I'll save it for another video, uh, but that should be an interesting video as well, and I'm keeping the app so I can show you data within that app. I also have B&H Photo, and some of these have recently been updated, and that's why they have the little blue dot next to them. B&H Photo for buying video gear, things like that. Uh, Punked Post is pretty nice. It's a nice way to send cards to someone. So if you want to send someone a card, the first one's free. Uh, they're handwritten cards, so whatever you write, you can include confetti with it, things like that. It was handwritten and free. Uh, another one is Cortana. A lot of you have seen my Siri versus Google Now uh, video, and I find that really funny because a lot of people that don't know my videos think I'm very biased towards Google on that particular video. But I'm just trying to be as unbiased as, as possible, really. And 
they want me to compare it to Cortana. So I'm still thinking about that. I don't know how many people actually use Cortana and windows phone is 1% now. And so unfortunately that platform until they do some sort of big update, maybe that may be coming with a surface phone. We don't really know right now. Cortana is a secondary app, so I'm not really sure how many people use it. So if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments. Uh, I use Inbox a lot. I actually use the stock mail app, but I go back and forth between Inbox and mail, depending on which account I'm looking at. And Inbox is really nice. It's made by Google and works really well with Gmail. It's definitely worth checking out. I just downloaded Max Curve uh, and Newegg. I actually just built a PC, so maybe these what's on my iPhone are kind of like a behind the scenes video as well, but I just built a PC for the first time in 12 years. I think I generally use Mac. I've, I've used PCs for many, many years. I've troubleshot them, provided tech support, all sorts of things, and thought it was time to build another one. So I bought built one. It runs an Oculus Rift, uh, and it's got some pretty nice hardware in it. So that's in another video coming up as well. Max Curve, haven't tried it at all, downloaded it just because it was on the App Store suggested, so I thought I'd check it out. And then on this page, of course, I have feedback because this is iOS 10 beta 2. Uh, Shutterfly, the Chick-fil-A app, if you're in the south, I'm in the southeast near Charlotte. Uh, Chick-fil-A's are all over, and they basically gave you a free sandwich, I think, for downloading the app, and then there's other things you get with it as well. I've just started using Robinhood. Robinhood is a stock managing app. They actually allow free stock trades. So that's something that's really nice. And I'm not really big on investing with stocks, but it's something neat to take a look at. Uh, and then Camera Plus and then T-Mobile Tuesdays, which is supposed to be really promising, but so far that's eh, mediocre. Basically every Tuesday they give us a new reward. And most of them are, well, they recently hit a free movie ticket, but you had to redeem it within two days or so. And I just didn't have time to use it. Uh, they also give you a frosty. It seems every Tuesday and a couple other things. Uh, they do give you one stock, uh, one, one share of their stock to actually use, uh, for yourself. And so that's some free money there really. And then I installed Swifty. This is a way to learn Swift kind of neat. And you can see Amazon Music and Google Maps. So I have a ton of different apps that I use regularly. Oh, and one thing I thought I'd bring up is I can't use paper anymore. Facebook made that great paper app, and they no longer support it. So unfortunately, it's no good, and now I have to use Facebook again, and it's not as good on battery. But that's what I have to do. So that's pretty much it. I don't really have anything exciting, uh, but let me know if there's anything you think I would benefit from, especially news wise. If you have something better for news, please let me know. Uh, I'm always searching for something. And as far as this wallpaper, I know a lot of you will probably ask, this is a stock iOS 10 wallpaper and it can be found pretty much anywhere at this point. If you just do a search for it, uh, when I do have another wallpaper on here though, I'll be sure to share it with you. If you have any other questions or suggestions, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.